Hello lovelies! Welcome to a video. My name is Maya. I'm an artist and an art instructor and here we talk about all things related to art and being an artist. And today we're going to talk about my process for painting custom birth charts. Uh, I really like to paint artists birth charts like this one of Van Gogh's birth chart, this one of Monet's birth chart, and this one of Frida Kahlo's birth chart. It's one of my favorite processes. It involves uh, painting with a fluid acrylics to start with and then adding on heavy bodied acrylics afterwards to create this beautiful celestial effect and to add some things that are meaningful to uh, whoever's birth chart I am painting. So today we're going to go through this process with Pamela Coleman Smith's birth chart. And you may not have heard her name before, but you have definitely seen her art. She was the illustrator of the Rider Waite Smith tarot deck. Uh, which has over a hundred million copies sold, so I almost guarantee that you have seen some of her paintings before. Uh, but regardless of that, she is not a very well-known artist, which I think it's time that that changed because she was incredible. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about my process for how I uh, paint these charts, and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about Pamela Coleman Smith because she was pretty cool. Um, and was an interesting figure in the art world in the early 1900s. So without further ado, here we go. Let's get into it. Alright, here we go. I'm going to start out with a nice big canvas. I'm using a 36 inch by 36 inch here. You can dance around with it, get ready for the painting. Um, and then we're going to take the Pamela Coleman Smith birth chart here and we're going to transfer it onto our canvas using magic. Ta-da! There we go. And now I know where I am pouring all of my planets, where all the placements are going to be. Uh, if you don't know much about astrology, a birth chart is a picture of the sky at the time you were born above the location you were born. And so that shows the placements of all the planets moving through the zodiac. And you probably know what your sun sign is. Um, most people know that I'm an Aries, I'm a Libra, I'm a Sagittarius, whatever. But you do have nine other planets in your chart that also have signs. So when people say I'm, I'm an Aries or whatever, they usually are talking about their sun sign. But you do have nine other planets in your birth chart um, that all have different signs and that contribute to your astrology and how, uh, how those energies are going to play out in your life. So here I've just finished up with the Sun and Venus, and I'm working on Saturn right now. I like to do Dutch pours for my planets, which is where you pour your colors on, and then you blow your paint around using either a hair dryer or a straw. I like to do this back and forth kind of method with the straw that gets um, those lines that kind of go across the planets, um, gives it a nice shape some gives it some extra form which is I really like so that's Neptune there and there's Mars we're gonna keep going with Pluto so while I uh, finish off these planets I'm gonna start telling you a little bit about Pamela Coleman Smith and her story and how she came to be the illustrator of one of the most popular tarot decks in the world so I got most of my information from two articles, one from Artnet by Katie White and another one from Hyperallergic by Shermissa Ray. Um, I hope I'm saying that right, she's got a dope name. I hope I'm doing it justice. Uh, so Pamela Coleman Smith uh, was never really a public name, she wasn't a household name, but she was really well respected by her peers in the art world. You'll find um, some of her pieces in the collections, the personal collections of Alfred Stieglitz and Georgia O'Keeffe, who are very well known artists, you probably have heard of them, um, but a lot of the people haven't heard of Pamela Coleman Smith, um, even though most people have seen her art. So, um, going into her life, Smith was born on February 16, 1878 in London, England to wealthy American parents who enjoyed a really large circle of influence 
in high society. Um, she grew up in New York and Jamaica. Uh, she was highly influenced by the culture and religion and folklore of the West Indies when she was living in Jamaica. And this translated to how she dressed and um, wore her makeup and comported herself as an adult. Um, when she grew up as an adult, she returned to New York and enrolled in the Pratt Institute in 1893, uh, which was only a few years before the Pratt Institute was founded. If you have never heard of it, it's a very prestigious and historic arts college uh, in New York. So there, under the mentorship of Arthur Wesley Dowd, she was introduced to significant styles and ideas of the day, such as Art Nouveau and symbolism, which she adopted with her own really stunning originality. Uh, Smith left the Pratt Institute in 1897 before completing her degree. She was dealing with the death of her mother the year before, as well as several illnesses that are left undefined. Um, and this prompted her to move back to London with her father. Um, at this time, she took up work as an illustrator in London and began to associate with the Lyceum Theatre Group, uh, where she became friends with many well-known actors of the day, in particular Ellen Terry, who began calling her Pixie, which was uh, what she was known as in those circles at the time. Uh, she met Henry Irving and Bram Stoker, who's the uh, author of Dracula. Um, and she would later illustrate uh, novels for both of these uh, writers and actors. Um, she traveled regularly with the Lyceum uh, Theatre Group, designing sets and costumes with them. So here we're gonna take a little break from Pamela's story, since you're probably wondering what I am doing with all of these cups on top of my paintings. Um, so this technique that I use is uh, for making planets. I like to pour my planet colors first and then I use these cups over top of the planets to mask them out and make sure that they don't bleed into the sky here. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm placing the cups over top of the planets and then scraping away the excess paint and then I'm pouring the sky color, in this case black, all around them and then I'll add some more colors to the sky and some stars in just a little bit. But now uh, back to Miss Smith's story. So Smith uh, sadly lost her father in 1898 at the age of 21. Um, but despite all of this tragedy that she had losing her parents at such young ages, um, she was able to accrue pretty significant acclaim and success in England. By 1901, she had established a studio in London where she was producing paintings, illustrations, calendars, and posters, and where she held well-known salons for artists, writers, and actors. Smith also achieved some acclaim as a writer. Her collection of Jamaican folk tales, the Annecy Stories, um, and the Whitcomb Fair, an illustrated version of popular English folk melody, drew particular attention. She was also able to begin her own paper, The Green Chief, which she edited and contributed to. Uh, it was also during this time that Smith began to associate with the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. This is a secret society that still in existence today. Um, they explore occult beliefs, uh, metaphysics, and paranormal activity. Uh, her spiritual beliefs had always been more oriented towards the esoteric and the arcane. She was raised Swedenborgian, which is a mystical denomination of Christianity, and um, with those heavy influences from Jamaican folklore in her younger years, really contributed to um, this esoteric belief system that really drew her towards the Order of the Golden Dawn. It was here that Smith met Arthur Edward Waite, who would eventually commission her to illustrate a new tarot deck. Uh, Waite gave Smith his direction in designing the 22 cards of the Major Arcana, uh, such as the Fool and the, and the World, but left the remaining 54 cards in the Minor Arcana up to Smith. This is where her grasp of symbolism and her use of her synesthesia really shine through. Um, Smith's illustrations are packed with layers upon layers of really elegant symbolism, creating a deck that made the art of reading tarot far more accessible to the average person. Now we are all familiar with modern, highly illustrative style of most tarot decks, 
but prior to Wheat and Smith's contributions, tarot decks contained much less illustrations and symbolism, often using only simple icons and numbers to mark the cards. Smith's illustrations allowed tarot readers to interpret the cards on the spot instead of relying solely on memorization and research and historic knowledge of the card. Even though the Rider Waite Smith deck is one of the most popular tarot decks of all time, um, Pamela Coleman Smith was only paid a nominal fee for her work as the illustrator. She never received any royalties or credentials um, based on this deck, which is part of the reason why she's not very well known. Um, the deck was published in 1909, uh, and in 1911, just a few years after this, uh, Smith left the art scene entirely. Despite her achievements, she never reached the acclaim or the financial stability that she was really after, and because of this, she just decided to exit entirely. She used a small inheritance to purchase a home in Bude, England, and that is where she passed away in relative obscurity in 1951 on September 18th at the age of 73 and that's her story or a condensed version of it anyways just the highlight so here we are getting into the flyover finished paint pour this is it all dried and completely finished ready for touch-ups um, so now's the really fun part it's kind of like figuring out a puzzle because I get to decide on the composition and um, yeah, decide how I'm gonna really pull this whole piece together because I can't move where the planets are. They're, they're stuck, they have to stay where they are. So I have to figure out how to get the imagery that I want and how to place all of the information that I need to place in this birth chart. I have to figure out how to do that in a way that is visually pleasing. So this process starts by taking a picture of my paint pour and then I'm going to crop that down to the right size here and then we're going to upload it into Procreate, which is my favorite drawing app uh, for uh, iOS anyways. Um, and here I'm sketching out, this is a sketch that I did for an Ace of Wands tarot card design, kind of based off of Pamela Coleman Smith's design. So I'm just adding that into my mock-up, and then placing all the planetary information. All here, this is Hobbs. He's my studio assistant today. He's not always the most helpful. Unless you can't get in cat hair and everything and being adorable. But um, yeah, he's pretty damn cute, so we keep him around. Good boy. Introduced to my studio assistants. Here we are starting to transfer that sketch that I did on the iPad. Here's some very blurry footage of me tracing over that sketch and just using some transfer paper to transfer this onto my canvas. That way I don't mess up this really huge expensive paint pour that I did. Um, and here's the satisfying reveal, getting to look at what's underneath. Always my favorite part. There it is. And yeah, that way I just know know where my paint is going. And it's a little less nerve-wracking. Here I'm just touching up the planets. We're making them a little bit more round in the shape that I want them to be. You know, round-ish. Um, and then we're going to be doing some acrylic glazing on top of these. So that's where you take acrylic medium, uh, which is kind of like paint without pigment. It's just clear paint. And we're going to be using that with um, some black and white paint to add shadows and highlights, which is what we're doing here, adding some shadows and then some highlights. And this gives them a really beautiful 3D effect, makes them look more like they're in the sky with the sun's light bouncing off of them. 
um, and yeah, I really love how this looks. It turns out really great every time. It's excellent. Acrylic glazing is an excellent tool to add to your artist kit um, if it's a skill that you don't have already. It's awesome. Um, so here we're getting into the hand, the Ace of Wands tarot card, um, and I chose this tarot card in particular for Pamela um, because Ace of Wands is really about creativity. It's the initial creative spark that starts a project. Um, it's the it's the go. It's the fire. Um, is yeah, it's it's a card that I always associate with artists in particular, um, especially really impulsive artists like myself. Um, and it's yeah, it's like taking on a new project and new beginnings. And I really associate that with the Rider Waite tarot deck and with Pamela Coleman Smith with her taking on such a new challenge and kind of revolutionizing tarot essentially um, so I'll put up Smith's Ace of Wands design so you can compare um, I kept it similar but I wanted mine to be a little bit more artist heavy a um, little bit more emphasis on the creative side of this card um, here we're going in and adding with a chalk pastel all of the different zodiac signs, the different sections, so I can paint those in later. Doing all the lettering, her name, um, misspelling her name, and then going back to fix it. That's why I like to use chalk pastel because you can just wipe it off. It's super easy to get rid of on top of acrylic paintings. I hope that Pamela would like this piece as much as I do. I hope she's looking down and she is proud of her work and she sees how relevant and revolutionary and influential she was, um, even if she didn't feel like it when she was alive. And I think that's why I'm so drawn to her story is because a lot of artists feel like that. They feel like their work is constantly undervalued. They feel like their work isn't seen. It's not important. But I want you to know that it is. It's so relevant and it's so important and even if it's just one person who your art impacts that is an immeasurable impact on the world you don't know what a large impact your art is going to have and you should never give up on it because of that it's super important to keep creating and keep going even in the face of those who don't believe in you and that's what I would want Pamela to know that's what I want all artists to know that their work means something so here is the finished piece some good close-ups I'm really happy with it I think it's stunning um, and I can see a lot of development in my art through this piece which makes me really excited um, and I hope that you gain something from it that you learn something from Pamela's story maybe learn something from my painting and there you have it that's how I do my custom birth charts um, let me know what you think. I, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I love the Ace of Wands tarot card in there. Um, 
yeah, I'm super excited about this one. I can't wait for it to go up for sale. Um, if you are interested in having your own birth chart painted, I do accept commissions. They are open right now, uh, and I will link down in the doobly-doo below um, where you can get in contact with me. Uh, and also my, my website and my social media so that you can check out some of the other ones that I have done. Um, yeah, give a like and subscribe down below. I must be a real YouTuber now that I've said that. Very strange. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.